You're listening to KEXP. You can find us at 90.3 FM in Seattle, streaming worldwide at kexp.org and also on our free mobile apps. I'm Cheryl Waters. I'm down here in the KEXP studios with some kooky lads, and I love them so. It's Squid. So great to have you here.
You're listening to Squid live on KEXP. A new album called Oh Monolith came out last year. It is so wonderful to hear these songs live here in KEXP studios today. Say 
joy riding in the sky The blades will make you pay Thousand people down below They're bending in the wind Keep their arms stretched open wide They're just blades of grass holding to bed Another man's hand on the joystick instead of mine He spins, he dies Oh, what's the noise outside Panes of glass An action man Playing God for a job I spin, I dive, I whirl around to sleep, trying at least. Won't they stop, come back down? It's ever so expensive to run that around the city. Burn the blade. All those cameras from the sky They make you gray You've lost your mind Through thick black smoke Pissing in the street Avoiding all the people That you wish to meet Some day That is Squid live on KEXP. You've done it again. <laughs> you blew my mind last time you were here in the KEXP studios. You're just such a great band to see live, which is a good thing because you spend a lot of time out on tour. And another good thing, if this is true, is I heard that a lot of times, or maybe always, your songs seem to come together um, from those live shows. Is that true? How does that work? Uh, yeah, definitely. That we improvise a lot on stage. Um, I think over the last year, we've kind of started describing our set as a kind of like a DJ set almost. Like all the all the songs kind of blend into each other and give each other room to make stuff up in between songs. Um, 
yeah, it's what kind of keeps it fun for us, I think. Um, yeah, instead of just playing the same, same thing every night. I know it was some time ago, but I just recently read about something called the Fieldworks Tour. What was that? You're like, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that was, uh, I think, like a week after our first record came out. Um, it was all still quite COVID-y. Um, and in the UK, you could play to seated audiences of like 30 people, I think. And um, we thought that would just be a nice opportunity to play towns and cities in the UK that don't that aren't really on the touring circuit. So we played in my kind of like hometown pub and stuff like that, um, and just played all new material. And all of that material ended up being a monolith. So it was kind of a, it was a nice road tester for us. That's why I asked. So these songs, uh, the germination of them started a couple of years ago, at least. I'm super interested to hear about Peter Gabriel's Real World Studios, where you made this record. I mean, it sounds like such a peaceful and bucolic setting. And between writing and recording, it sounds like you spent a bit of time there. Can you kind of draw a picture? Yeah, we, we did a lot of the writing there as well. Um, so they've got like on the other side of the the recording studio, which is, we always say, kind of looks like a Bond villain's house. There's a kind of like uh, prefab kind of writing room, which we spent, I feel like maybe two winters or a winter and a spring in, and it was like just somewhere you can go back to over and over again um, and become really familiar with the, with the kind of environment around the town's called Box in, it's near Bristol in the Southwest. And um, yeah, we spent a lot of time writing there and then when we came to record there it was great doing that with Dan Carey again um, and we we got John McIntyre from Tortoise in on the project as well and he mixed it which was great because we finally got to meet him last week as well um, yeah. but yeah Real World was kind of like the perfect environment for a monolith there was kind of no noise just like a nice remote area which it's kind of annoying that you set the bar that high and everywhere else is just the, just a, li a little bit disappointing <laughs> yeah. yeah you'll have to re achieve perfection. <laughs> record every record there well it definitely sounds like the geographic location contributed to the band's creative process i noticed some field recordings on there are those things you think you would have thought to use if you'd been in dan's little basement studio maybe <laughs> it's a very different environment uh, I think because we were because we did a lot of the writing in the same place that we did the recording, like Louis said, I think we were keen to like reflect that in some way. So it was nice to bring in like little pieces of the outside environment for sure. One of the other changes on the record is um, a little shift in your voice, Ollie, and we definitely heard that on that last song, The Blades. Um, there's a softer, sweeter side to you. How How is that feeling for you? Uh, it's good because I think that's kind of more my personal side. <laughs> He's a very soft um, and sweet boy. Yeah, I'm, I'm not, I don't just shout all the time. Never shouts at us. I never, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I never shout at anyone, apart from... So, thousands of people in the crowds. Yeah, sometimes. every night. <laughs> um, but yeah, that was, it was a real challenge and um, it was really hard. And I think I'm glad it's over, but I'm also glad I did it because um, I think my voice has gotten a lot better. And yeah, it was just, it was a really fun challenge. Because I think everything up until I'm on a lift, I kind of just went into autopilot screaming and I, I find that quite easy. Um, but yeah, it was good to good to challenge myself, set myself some homework. Well, it's beautiful and it definitely fits oh, the music, the music on this album. Um, you're also joined by a chorus of vo voices on the closing track on the album, which sounds absolutely beautiful. If you had seen the bull swimming attempts, you would have stayed away. Okay, that's a question in and of itself right there. But tell me about the use of uh, those, those other voices. The choir is called Shards and um, they're run by a friend of ours, Kieran, and we just, we wanted to expand our palette even further from Bright Green Field and test writing for people who don't know us, don't know our music and could take our little ideas into a whole new world. And I think it was so much fun putting, we just used the choir like, a, like we would use our synths with Dan and put them through a whole load of 
crazy modular effects and um, did some interesting experiments with them and tuning ceremonies and what was it called? What did you call it? Felt like a gong bath. Yeah, we did some gong baths with them. It was great fun. Yeah. Real World has a great gong. It's huge. It's bigger than them. You got a little yeah. gong over yeah, there. You got a little gong. <laughs> it's not about size. <laughs> Well, it sounds like it was just such an enjoyable experience making this record. And you just also really seem to enjoy spending time together, being out on the road together. I appreciate you always making time to stop by KEXP. Oh, thanks, thanks for having us back. Having us back. It's really nice to be here. Oh, Monolith is the new album from Squid. It came out last summer and it's on Warp Records. Highly recommend both the record and the live show. Thank you again so much for coming by today. See you, Thank you so much. Thank you. you You've got it tuned to KEXP. We're listener-powered radio. You can subscribe to our YouTube channel and get notification every time we launch a wonderful new video. Discover all your new favorite bands here at KEXP. And we are listener-powered. You can make a gift in support of music discovery anytime at kexp.org. Once again, thanks to the band Squid, all of our wonderful listeners and viewers. We appreciate you so much. You're listening to KEXP Seattle. Discover new music at listenerpoweredkexp.org.